Hello! <laughs> oh, you. You're here again. <laughs> Welcome. Are you talking to me? No, I was talking to them. <laughs> oh, Billy you. And him. I He's can barely here again. see anyone. There's something sort oh, of. Oh, sorry. These aren't, these aren't my over glasses. Over the top. Oh, oh no. <laughs> it wasn't your glasses. Oh, oh right. Can't right. you see there's like a. A sort of, I want to oh, use, yeah. for the lack of Some a better kind of term, film. plastic. <laughs> <laughs> a bit of a plastic there. What do you think, Mr. Plastic Man? He doesn't say much. Uh, oh, it's gone. We're clean now. Oh, we're clean. Oh. Um, I did enjoy wearing these glasses that aren't mine. These are yours. I know, I'll have to they're sanitize cool. them They're cool now. glasses. I'm sorry, I'll sanitise them for you. We're very COVID safe, don't <laughs> worry. Uh, um, so... You'll notice that someone is missing, and that is Amel, who unfortunately is just off having a lovely time somewhere. No, heartbroken. Heartbroken Heartbroken from her breakup with plastic. She's so heartbroken. No, she's actually sick today. Unfortunately, oh. with her so, um, but with a sick with a broken heart. Did you not watch the story? <gasps> yes, I know what you're saying. This but thing. Th- this was the broken broke hearted, her heart. This is the broken hearted oh, fella here. She could still be broken hearted. Um, but she's unfortunately, yeah, she's no, I don't think she'd be broken. You could still be broken. I think she's just a little ill, but she'll be all right hopefully very soon. So Focusing don't don't thing. stress about um, Amel. She will be back again soon, and it was a shame because it was going to be her first uh, Ask a Reporter in the hot seat. I was going to. Oh, in the, in in the, the hot, hot seat. seat. I meant which yours, I'm in. sorry. Yes. Yeah, which you're in. Because she replaced you last yes, week. She did. And now I'm replacing her. Who are you yes, replacing? Um, I'm not sure. This, this guy. <laughs> but he's here. Anyway, let's move on. Gosh, we are very distracted today. All right. <laughs> so happy Friday and welcome to Ask a Reporter. I'm Amelia. I'm Jack. And this is Mr. Plastic. And if you've seen Amel's story, you will know who this guy is yeah because he was in this story i really like that that was a fun a fun way of presenting it, it what did you guys think did you way. enjoy it yes i really like could you all acting. relate she's to great. it she's very she's really funny <laughs> she's very fun <laughs> and can we also confirm mm. that this was not plastic that was um we didn't buy this plastic no. to make this this was recycled plastic mm. absolutely so I don't know. That's, I just no, disclaimer. A good disclaimer there. I like that. Yes, this is all recycled. I don't want it. I don't but, want other kids but, but starting a news clean channel and you know? calling us hypocrites. Um, <laughs> I feel like he looks so sad that I just want to like turn this around before we start so that we're all in like a happier mood today. Oh. Because he's probably happy too. Because now we're going to help the environment by talking about getting rid of. Yeah, him. maybe we should pick some of this <laughs> plastic off him and reveal this suit underneath. Because that's not rubbish. That's not rubbish. That's recycled too. All right, so let's jump <laughs> into Different things because we have so many questions. And from I'm going to do my best to again. answer. And Jack's going to do his best to stay on once. track, or at least I will try to keep him on track for your sake. <laughs> I don't know what you're. What are you talking about? Nothing. Nothing. I always stay um, on all track. All right, moving on. <laughs> Speaking of tracks. <laughs> <laughs> You've been on a train. <laughs> All right, no, come on, let's get into this. All, All right. right. Okay, Cooper from Roland's Cooper. Plains, Upper Public School, Roland's, Roland's Plains. Every again. week. Every week, love you guys. Cooper says, why does plastic go to the beach? All in capitals. Oh, Cooper's um, yelled that last bit. I the mean, beach. The beach. The beach. Well, uh, if you think about it, why do you go to the beach? Because it's... Got I'm water, not sure it's the same reason. sand, oh, okay, you can yeah. splash around, have fun. And that's what Mr. Plastic goes <laughs> That's what Mr. Plastic. Plastic. No. <laughs> um, I mean, all sorts of reasons. It could just have been someone might have thrown it out at the beach. That could be that's an obvious reason. Um, another one is if you think about it, a lot of rubbish that gets thrown out on the street, a lot of litter rather, um, would end up in waterways. So yes. it might go into the drains. Gutters. Um, you know, if it rains, it could all get collected, go into the gutters, into the drains, um, which then might go out into the ocean or out into a river mm-hmm. that could then lead to an ocean. So, yeah, it's not it's not that people are going to the beach and littering on purpose. Hopefully not. If you are, stop. Mm. What are you doing? But, um, yeah, so it's just... The way mm. the waterways. And yeah. So and then also, I guess, um, like once it gets into, for instance, the sea, you have currents, and so the way that the water moves will often, you know, take uh, things into a certain direction, 
um, you know, and the washing up on shore is just like a natural process. So lots yeah. of things wash up on the shore and unfortunately that includes plastic. That isn't always the case. Yeah. You know, there is, um, if you don't know about this, there is that um, big patch of garbage in the middle of the ocean where a lot of it, because of the currents, again, it's not washing towards a beach, but it's actually all just stuck in the middle of the ocean and floating around and, yeah, and gathering nice in the same kind of, of area. And that's something that's not, it's awful. No. And that's something that lots of... Um, researchers and innovators have been trying to fix for many years so yes wasn't there like a snake vacuum sort of there was we've done a vtm story on it at some stage yes is that an accurate description of it Uh, yeah that was that was a vacuum snake (laughs) all right i've got lucy from east adelaide school lucy says why do some people refuse to recycle ah i don't know refusing to recycle should we ask this guy Who's, are you refusing to recycle? I think maybe it's not people. I, I would hope people aren't refusing to su- ref, refusing to recycle. Yeah, me Ooh. too. Instead, maybe it's that they don't know how to recycle properly because there are a lot of um, different. There are a lot of things need to be recycled in different ways, and there's different bins and places to send your recycling. So maybe it's not that they're refusing to recycle. It's just that they don't know how to, mm. which is you know why it's important to do stories about this because we can let you know and 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 if you don't know you can always go to your local council um to their website because they've got so much i go there actually i've been there a few times to find out you know what bin can i put this in it's so handy isn't it having a list like that and speaking of which we're going to show you a few of the labels that you might actually spot Mm. on um for instance something like this if you Uh, finished your yogurt and you're wanting to chuck that out in the correct place i'm going to show you some of the labels you might end up with um and and that they'll they'll tell you uh some things that you can do with a container or whatever it is that's made of plastic like that so let's have a look oh there it is there it is so on the left there we've got our recycle i feel like most people are familiar with that but this middle one Mm. that is that is tricky so conditionally Mm. recyclable so you have to follow uh instructions basically uh, below the symbol so that could be for instance if something um can be recycled at your local or by your local supermarket. So yeah, usually like soft plastics. Soft plastics. And so exactly. that would be things like plastic bags, wrappers mm-hmm. uh, from um, certain foods, chip mm-hmm. packets. Chip packets. A uh, cling yep. wrap. Yes. That's clean, not dirty. Yes, exactly. <laughs> um, that sort of stuff. And um, what most people do, or what I do, mm-hmm. is gather it all in a, in a bag, if mm-hmm. I've got one, and then you take it to most supermarkets. Um, you can actually drop it They'll do it. Off. it. And just you'll see at the end there, that's not recyclable. That one's pretty straightforward. We've got the bin there. So at times there might be, um, for instance, you'll see like box wrap and lid at the top there. So this is an example of when it might be, you know, the lid has a different instruction for recycling or, or throwing out or whatever than the rest of the, the packaging. So it's actually good to know that some parts of a thing sometimes are recyclable and others aren't. So you do have to be careful mm. and make sure you're checking things quite closely so yeah it's interesting Mm. one thing that i've learned actually um doing a btn story on on recycling and stuff before Mm. is that um from an expert you're learning from btn i'm learning too from (laughs) btn i'm learning with you guys so this expert said that you don't actually have to have your for instance container completely clean like it doesn't have to be like rinsed several times and washed with dishwashing liquid because Mm. that also uses a lot of water unnecessarily so as long as you can't turn it upside down and have stuff coming out of it then it's okay i think i remember that actually from that that story so i learned something from your story yes there you go um do you want to also talk oh there might be there might be a question about it but i was going to talk about some other little bits and pieces like um composting Composting. And biodegradable things, but let, is there a question? I don't know. Oh, you well, let's you start talking, and I'll what see if there's a. What do you want me to a, talk about? Well, just let's talk about that because we talked about recycling there and throwing things out. So yes. let's talk about what people do with composting. Do you compost? Uh, I I don't have a compost mm. system at home, but I do. Um, you know, put all my food scraps into a compostable. 
it looks like plastic, but it's not plastic. And you guys might have some as well, but into the green bin. And I've got the little kitchen caddy. Mm -hmm. um, and that's uses biodegradable, or sorry, compostable bags that you can put straight into the green bin with all your food scraps. And that'll be part of the composting process, um, which is a fun process. Yeah, you've done a story about this I before. did, it was really fun. Yeah, so if you want to learn more about that, make sure you check out Jack's Composting story Composting awareness. Composting, it was lots of fun. So yes, and then there's biodegradable, which yes, is... Yes, actually, um, so speaking of which, before I'll just interrupt oh, you, Mia oh. from Port Nolunga Primary School. <gasps> this is Mr Hurd's Year 6-7 class Mr. again. Mr hey. um, How can you tell the difference between biodegradable plastic and normal plastic? So let's talk about oh. um, biodegradable plastics, because Mia, that's a great question. That is a great question. I, I, I don't know, do you know the physical, like, the physical differences no, I'm going to no hope that idea. they say on them but that I'm, there would be a label yes they should say and I had read um, when I was researching this one time because I was baking cookies and I needed individual packaging for cookies mm. and I just didn't want to use your regular plastic and like boxes mm. seemed like a kind of a waste as well for, like, there's quite a lot of packaging and production there so just for a little cookie um, so I ended up buying biodegradable plastic bags so I went to an environmentally friendly web website um, that was big on that kind of stuff and mm bought them but mm. I have been told that it is possible that it is like when it's biodegradable it might just be breaking down into smaller p pieces of plastics also oh. known as microplastics so it's definitely something I don't know the answer to whether that's the case or not but it's something that I'd heard so it's good to yeah. probably look into so yeah it. and so biodegradable is different to compost compostable in that you can't put biodegradable in the green bin um, and it won't break down into turn into compost mm. so that's also important to know so yes I think it just essentially it take it it breaks down quicker than regular yeah. plastic yes it breaks down and I think the idea is hopefully that it it breaks down so much that it is almost disappearing but if you're put at least I suppose if you're if you're thinking about tons and tons of plastic and we're putting it out mm. there and having to put it in certain spots I mean biodegradable is probably a better choice but that said I think it's probably better off just trying not to use plastic where you can at all um, mm. but yeah someone once said life in plastic it's fantastic do you think That's they regret <laughs> that that's a reference. No one. They might. Oh, no, they might. I shouldn't say that. Maybe some teachers. Barbie girl. Aqua. <laughs> it's a. It's a. Actually, it is a. Yeah. Well, let us know if you know the song Barbie Girl. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, <laughs> hey, do you know what year plastic was invented? That's from James I from do. IGS. I do, and I'm definitely International not. International Grammar School. Um, I'm definitely not grabbing my phone to look for that. <laughs> it was 1907. I can't believe it was that early, Jack. I guess, yeah. It, it's because I suppose we like. <laughs> well, it didn't become really popular until that, like the I middle was of the. Say, so like the, 1950s, like the 40s 1950s, and 50s. Yeah. yeah. So it, although it was invented mm. very early on, it, it, I don't think people really thought of what they could do with it. Yeah. Um, and then they did. <laughs> And then they did, and then they thought of heaps of really great things they could do with it and didn't really realise the consequences that that was going to have on the rest of us for yes. a very long time. Yes. Hey, so speaking of consequences, Indy and Harriet from um, Petersham Public School. Hello. Indy and Harriet say, how many years does it take for plastic to decompose? Mm, great question. So yeah, we, do, really we know it takes today. a long time, um, and it actually depends on what type of, what, what, the, what, what it is. Is it a bottle? Is it a plastic bag? Um, how much of the plastic is there and it can take anywhere between tw I think it's around 20 years to 500 tried to whistle but it didn't quite come out <laughs> that's a we, long time that's, a, that's long a long time, time. that's a long time we're yeah. quite good at that we could have a whistling <laughs> group uh, all right. Tried to think um, of a word. Yeah, so it, it's a. It, anyway. it, it takes a long time. Yeah. Which is why, time. you know, the, the in, a, in a mile story, the, they're making the pact to try and use less plastic, none at all. Yeah. Because. That's why she's breaking up with this guy. She's breaking up with this guy. And mm. I, despite the fact he's probably going to hang around for quite a while. Yeah, he's going to linger. He's going to linger. Mm. You know, she had to say, enough is enough. Yeah. So. <laughs> um. Do you think it's possible to for every piece of plastic to become 
recyclable forever. That's from Caitlin from Sturt Public School. Ooh, I love like this. So, and I love this ima- this, Im- this, Was this it idea. This is Caitlin. So, Caitlin. so I guess saying like, if we could take something like this, and you know, we all know. I'm, well, I'm sure you guys know this that these bottles like this, when you recycle them, they'll be turned into all sorts of different things. Yes. So, imagine could we keep on doing that potentially? Yes. Uh, I, I mean. Wonder. That's the idea. That's kind of what they're trying to do now to combat um, a lot of the pollution. And, and, you know, while we're still making plastics um, and they're still around and we're buying things that are contained in plastic, the idea is to recycle it as much as possible so that it can be reused and turned into other things. Um, I guess the problem with that is it still costs, a, like it uses a lot of energy um, to, to do that. And it actually also costs more to recycle plastic than it does to make the plastic, which is quite interesting, to make new plastic, sorry. Mm. Did you know that? It, no, I missed that, sorry. So what it actually that? costs, um, it costs more to recycle plastic than it does to create n- uh, completely new, new plastic. plastic. Right. So, um, I, yeah, it's it's a very interesting. I mean, I would hope that they would, with the thing like the plastic pact that is coming through, mm. that we we just don't have plastic anymore, and that the stuff that we've got yeah, left now really we're nice. using it gets recycled and it gets turned into something else. How cool would that be? That would be so good if we could just all move towards that. You got you, anyone out there, budding young scientist who wants to yeah. who come up with a solution? I know hey. there are a couple out there already, but you guys, what what could we use instead of plastic? Yeah, let us know. Scarves? Let us know what you think. We could use nice scarves. Actually, no, to wrap do let things. us know. Let us know what you are other than Jack's brilliant idea of scarves. Let us know what Don't uh, steal what do that. you do? What are your tips for us and for the rest of the country watching um, about like recycling or ways of you know trying to avoid using plastic? Let us know, because I can tell you one that I know we both do is we try to use beeswax paper. Mm. Beeswax paper is a instead really cling wrap. handy instead of cling wrap. Cling wrap. Or it's just, a really handy um, thing or containers. Yeah, do or use containers, containers. Yeah, that containers. are reusable. Reusable containers. That yeah. I'll never get rid of. Yeah. Um, I know mm-hmm. another thing you could do. Mm-hmm. I'm just going to throw this out there. Say you've got a bunch of straws at home that yeah. you have collected. Plastic Make an artwork ones. out of them. Yeah. I like the idea like of turning. Idea too. Like what we've done. We've taken our plastic pollution and we've turned it into whatever this is. <laughs> <laughs> hey, look at this. Oh, this is making me so happy and it will make you happy too. Oh. Barbie from Barbie School. <laughs> Oh, hey, Barbie. hey, Barbie. Barbara. And has given us all of the lyrics. <laughs> Thank you very much. To Barbie Girl, the song. So thanks, girl. Thanks, Barbie. Thank you. Love your work. Tell Skipper and Ken we said hi. <laughs> so that's great. Your reference was not lost oh, on at least one good. person. <laughs> um, so, hey, why does composting help? That's from Marola from Kidman Park. So why does composting Composting help? helps, and this is moving a little bit away from plastic, but hey, we're, we're all about moving away from the actual topic here. <laughs> but um, composting is good um, because what happens is if you put food scraps into your regular bin, um, what happens is that gets taken to the landfill and it actually mixes with the water and all the other um all the other garbage there and it creates a sort of sludge i can't remember what it's called yes it's like a toxic sludge. it's like a toxic kind of sludge mm. that can get into our waterways and mm. it, it's just it, it doesn't it, it doesn't end well <laughs> it doesn't end well <laughs> ominous, but... so yeah. interesting um it's so actually in my composting story but you so the i when you're composting you're actually turning that into something that can then be um used as fertilizer to help grow other plants um, and that sort of stuff. So it's a much better idea if you can to be putting your food scraps in, say the green bin if you, or in your compost, if you do have a compost. Yeah. I know also some people have might have chickens, so they feed a lot of their food scraps to chickens. That's another good way to get rid of- um, Yeah, that's a good one. Your food wastes. Oh, we have so many great questions today. And there's also so, a lot of things that can go in your green bin. Like, yeah. I, you should probably go on the council, your local council website and check, but like pizza boxes? Yeah. 
they can go cardboard, in the cardboard, untreated because they're cardboard. Yeah, because it's a natural product. And paper, because because what will happen is you paper. if you think like, oh, I want to put this cardboard in the recycling bin, but it's got food all over it. Yeah, can't do that. Yeah. Oh, I'll put it in the green bin. Put it in the green bin. It's great. Um, so. This is a really, um, you know, like an obvious question, but one we haven't really talked that much about, which is um, from Margate Primary School. This is from, I think, the whole class, 3, 4, P, F. The whole class. So why did they make plastic in the first place? Ah. Why didn't they think it through? So we sort of mentioned this a little bit. I like that. Why didn't they think it through? <laughs> I agree, Margate Primary, they really didn't. But I think it's it's something we should talk about because... Well, I think when they made it, they obviously didn't know what the consequences would be. No. So they weren't thinking, oh, I'm going to create something that, you know, it's more than 100 years later, people will be talking about and ask a reporter about how bad it is. <laughs> <laughs> they were definitely not thinking that. Um, it, it got invented because... Um, it was, it's easy to make. Um, it's very cheap to make because the materials that you use to make it don't cost very much. Um, and it can be used for all sorts of things. It's so useful. It's and very it has useful. And it's been extremely useful. And for it can, a really long and you time. can you get all different types of plastics, as we know. So you can have hard plastics, um, some that'll last, and I mean, they last a really long time. So you've got your hard plastic containers, um, you can use them for packaging for all sorts of things. You've got your thin plastics like cling wrap. Mm -hmm. um, and you've got to think about it like, you know, like any um, sort of new technology or something like it was very popular yes. it was something that was being sold to people in particular particular in like the 1950s is when like kind For of like consumerism and, and, con yeah. and convenience became really important and so um, people you know it was right after World War II and it's like the baby boomers which is when lots of people had children after World War II and they settled in their houses and they wanted convenience and nice things and lots of companies made tons of money by selling nice things to people all over the world and so mm. this was that kind of time so it's it's like people were thinking in a different way and if yes. you saw this for the first time and you thought oh wow how convenient you know instead of getting a, a really expensive instead of having to carry this around bottle, you know I can have this thing where I can buy it and then I can just throw it away and I can don't have to carry it around and whatever you know so it's just like a different way of thinking as well so while we can look back and go oh this is it's just terrible. I can't believe they did this. You've got to remember people thought differently at that time. And unfortunately, yeah, I don't know. I'm sure some people knew. Some scientists and researchers probably worked out pretty quickly that it was going to be a problem. But unfortunately, it's just not always the case that, you know, we can we can just know what's going to happen all these years later. And um, But now, that's why we can all work together now to try and change it and, and go back a little bit to the things we used to use before, like more cardboard, for instance, yeah. and more recycled stuff. And, you know, just... You just got to change your attitude Scarves. a little bit, and everybody's kind of working together. Scarves, if you're Jack, I'm still not sure what he's carrying. You know what a great? Scarf. Uh, you know what? No, you know mm. what you could use that for? Carrying oranges. Yes, but also wrapping <laughs> presents. Have you ever thought of about that? Wrapping a present in like a scarf. Yeah, I'm, get, I'm, get it, I'm getting the move along sign oh, okay. here for. <laughs> putting it out I'm no I like that good for you I, no, no, I was thinking more like a winter scarf anyway um, okay so let's see let's see let's see um, can you recycle coffee cups Alex from CSPS coffee cups uh, you check the labelling you can actually some of them you can put in the um, green bin they've that made yes. them compostable um, yes. and then I believe the lids are usually made of a plastic that you can then recycle yes but they will Quite say often, on the they'll, they'll say on the cup so but um, a good idea is to just have a reusable coffee yes, cup reusable if you're coffee drinking cup, coffee you're how drinking old are you coffee. you shouldn't be drinking coffee <laughs> <laughs> Um, well, we don't know how old they are. Let's not pass judgment. All right, so um, let's see, let's see. We're gonna. I want to. We want to show you some different plastic types. So I'm not sure if anyone's asked a question to do with that, but we want to show some pl different plastic types. So there are numbers. Is this what we're doing? Numbers that refer. Okay. Yes. So what are the numbers? Okay, so you know. I'm going to leave you to do this because I have no idea what it's going So, on. well, the numbers will tell you... Uh, oh, the type of plastic it is? Well, well, how to recycle it. Oh. And the type of plastic. So, oh. So this one okay, cool. in the I like lid, it when I don't know what's going on too, so I get to learn with you. <laughs> so on this lid, you will never be able to see this because it is so tiny and I could barely read it with ah, my eyes. No, yeah, I can't see that. You know, this is the second week my hands have been close up on <laughs> really? Ask the Reporter. Really? What was it last week? 
Um, coins or something? Coins. Coins, coins yeah. <laughs> no, <laughs> He's like, no, it oh, wasn't. No, no. no? So that was the last time I used anything. Oh, oh. was it? Oh. Um, Anyway, uh, so this said number two. <laughs> I'm, I'm just thinking about my future career as a hand model. Um, and so number two, um, and this is for, I believe, the Adelaide area, South Australia. Mm-hmm. Um, and this is would be found on milk and juice bottles, deter, uh, detergents, shampoo and conditioner bottles, water pipes and grocery bags. And so can it be recycled in the yellow bin? Your recycling bin? Yes, it can. Yes, it can. <laughs> should have made you guess. You should have. It was a very exciting reveal. <laughs> so, by looking at this and then having this piece of paper near me, I was able to tell if I could recycle it or not. Having this piece of paper. Ah, so this is a cool example to what we were talking about before, where you have here, all right, we have bottle and we have cap. So the cap has to be recycled. They have specific conditions. I can't read that from here. And then the bottle is just chuck it in your recycling bin. What does the cap say? Uh, Something bottle. Crush bottle and replace cap. Ah, there you go. (laughs) Crush bottle and replace the cap. So there you go. So I, I, need, I need to pay a lot more attention to these um, things because I, I don't feel like I knew that. I would have just chucked that in the recycling bin. Also, this isn't our rubbish either. We don't know where it came from. But it was recycled. <laughs> and I think it's been cleaned. It looks like it's been cleaned. It looks like it's been cleaned quite well. Again, COVID, you can just reuse COVID all of friendly, this. COVID friendly. COVID friendly. All right, we haven't got long no, to go. Okay, so this one, this one's interesting because this one's got three different ones. So the cardboard that actually goes around it yeah. can be recycled into the yellow bin. This on here says five, which means it's a container, juice, or bottle cap. Um, so yes, it can go into the the recycling bin. And then this says uh, six, which is no, it can't be put into the recycling bin ah, because it's a the container. Um, yeah, the con- the actual container under the cardboard that right. wraps around. Which uh, I hope- I hope I'm allowed that. to do that. See that little... Oh, that's so interesting. Okay, so you that, really do have to think through these do, things. You have to, yeah. Yeah, it's good to know, though. All right, so let's keep moving because we've got, we've got to answer a few more questions before we uh, let you guys go. And before um, we go recycle all, all this waste. Is there... A, do you know... Um, I know a lot of things. Let's... <laughs> You do, you really do. Why does plastic last so long? That's Taylor from Rollins Plains uh, Upper Public School. Um, Good question. Hello, Rollins again. (laughs) Rollins again. We've asked lots of questions, Rollins. I'm chucking Um, you another one. uh, So it it takes such a long time to break up because um, it can't be like other things that, you know, can like food scraps, for example, that take a shorter time to break down. Bacteria can't eat away at the plastics like they do for food scraps or cardboards, that sort of stuff, um, because of what it is made of. So basically it just, yeah, there's and uh, the, the heat from the sun will break it down, but it, that just takes a really, really long time. So plastic, it's very strong and powerful. Yeah. Um, okay, so Hidaya, I hope I'm saying your name correctly. Um, you didn't tell us which school you're from, but tell us next time. Um, how much, uh, what, like, what percentage of plastic garbage goes into the sea? That's what Hidaya would Ooh. like to know. I, I Do you know? know the percentage? I just said I know so many things. You did. You I just could make said one that. Up. Now you've disappointed um, Hidaya. I think it's uh, 67%. Hidayah. No, I you're making stuff up. up. You're I making stuff up. up. All right. Sorry. We'll, we'll see if we can. We'll get we a little find birdie out into that for you, Hidayah. Okay. I know so, so many other things. <laughs> um, if you do, oh, the answer will come up. All right. We'll give you the answer, we'll give you the come answer up. in a in a minute. Just you wait. Um, uh, so, I know how many pieces of plastic make it into the oceans. Okay. Do, do you can you do you want to guess? Um, it's a lot. So how many pieces? How many pieces? Oh, I don't even think you could count that, could you? Eight million. That's a lot. How, can, how Who's a counted lot. that? A, that's me. a lot. But that's per, wait. But that's every day. That's, that's every day. Every day ends up in the ocean. Well, I mean that's worldwide that's, as well. Yeah, that's it's a, a lot. lot. I was yeah, that's a lot. That's a really shocking um, stat, isn't it? Um, Mahalia from or Mahalia from Avondale says, can the government just ban plastic? Uh, I mean, it kind of 
has. Well, single-use plastic. Yes. I mean, technically, the government probably could places. ban plastic. Um, and well, single-use plastic bags have been in, but it's it's in certain states. Yes. As well. So certain states mm. usually start yeah. the trend. Yes. And then um, and then you know it'll follow. But um, mm. at the moment, they haven't banned plastic. Uh, okay? South Australia has banned single-use single use plastic. plastic. Yes. Um, so single-use is the stuff mm. designed, obviously, to just be used one time. Yes. And so, yeah, I think it's very much at this stage, it's, you know, it's very much up to local governments, like each state government, sorry, to um, to make the decisions on these kinds of rules um, because they have, yeah, d- different laws around um, different stuff like that. So, it's, yeah. you know, it's not really... Um, so much at that federal government level at the moment, but and also like technically, yes, they plastic. Could. I think the it's probably fair to say that the biggest problem is single-use plastics because mm-hmm. there are a lot of products that are made out of plastic, but you don't nece- you're not necessarily throwing them away. Like you know, food containers that I'll pack my lunch in. I've had them for many years, and I'll yes. probably continue to have them for many years. Um, but yeah, all the the stuff that this guy's covered in, you're not really gonna use again sorry so i just want to because we've got to keep moving samantha from hartwell Pri- hartwell primary school Hello. says samantha is such a huge fan ah. um i'm always at school so i've never really been able to submit a question but sh- uh samantha just wanted to tell us that my school uses compostable containers um, for the canteen oh. And my question is, what would you do if plastic was banned all over the world? What would we do? Yeah. What would we do? What would people do? I'd I probably, think people would just go with it. I think people We'd would adapt. go with it too. I think we're already adapting. We are. I we think are. We're, it seems we're very hard conscious times, of it. It does. But then when something, you know, it, which is which is actually why we're talking about this as well, because it can be hard on an individual level mm. to go to the supermarket and always make the right choices. Yes. Because, you know, especially maybe if you have dietary re- requirements or something, you might have to choose something that has is packaged in plastic or has some kind of plastic element. And you know, you don't have maybe another choice at times. So it's that's why it's really important that um, business get involved which they are which is what this story is about because you know a lot of this stuff is coming from supermarkets and so maybe if you have one plastic container one uh you know recycled product and then another one that's completely plastic free and fantastic and say the prices vary but i think a lot of people would still if they can pick the environmentally friendly one given the choice so you know we just need more choice we need more choice and so that's kind of what's going on i don't know if you've noticed in the shops no choice at all except for good ones but when it comes to like uh bin bags and that sort of stuff Mm. have and cling wraps even a lot of them are now um changing what materials they actually use to make that so they are choosing biodegradable ones Mm. which you know it's not completely eliminating the problem but it is a start it's a start and that's what this is all about just doing your best so we have to finish up but i just want to say um really quickly that i have i don't want to go back to um, work can we just stay and hang out? I think it was Aira. Did I say that? Oh, man, I forgot how to pronounce your name. Yeah, I think it was Aira. Aira from Dandy South Public School or Primary School. Hello. Um, hi, Amelia. Why were you not here last Friday on my oh. birthday? Oh. I'm so sorry. Oh, I'm Happy so sorry, birthday. Aira. Happy birthday. It was birthday your birthday to recently, you. too. It was my birthday recently. Was it the same day? Mm, I don't think no. so. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm also like a May baby, so yay. Um, so happy birthday. Hope you had a good one. I'm sorry I wasn't there. Um, hi, Amelia and Jack. I also hate this stupid lockdown. That was also from Aira, and I just wanted to say I'm so sorry because you're in sorry. Melbourne. Um, and to everyone else who's watching from Melbourne, we're sorry that you're in lockdown yeah. again. But, you know, it's good to um, get onto it, and hopefully you guys will be out of that really quickly. Yes, and you guys know Fingers what to crossed. do now. You're pros. You know what to do. Wearing your hopefully masks, it won't be too doing long. the right thing, taking care of each other. But, yeah, hopefully it won't be too long. Plenty of time to um, Watch all the BTN stories on plastic and composting <laughs> yes. and any others. <laughs> Lots of time. All right, and let's do a few shout outs. So I have um, Mountain Gate Primary School, Oakley South Primary. I'm going to mention some that I haven't um, gotten to. So I've got St. Michael's Daisyville, Belling- Bellingham Public School, International Grammar School, St. Joseph's Port Macquarie. Um, Let's see, I've got Varsity College. Um, Varsity College. Yeah, that's different. Um, 
Dunwich Dunwich State School. Uh, let's see who else is a bit newer here. I've got Avalon Public, Mona Vale Public School, Dane Bank, Mooney Ponds, Banyul Primary School, Borkham Hills North Public School, the Australian International School of Malaysia. Ooh. Welcome, welcome. Hello. Askham. Um, let's see. Uh, Discovery Montessori Academy, Hong Kong, China. Ooh. Welcome. That's Hello. so awesome. Awesome. Um, and some good, a good question there too. I, I didn't get to that. That's sad. But thank uh-huh. you. Please submit another question next week. Stradbroke <laughs> School, Sacred Heart Primary School, St Andrews, Mark Oliphant. I better call it there. But thank you so much to all of you for writing in. Yes. Jack, again, great job. Ah. Uh. Mr. Plastic, uh, you did all right. You did too. nothing. You're going straight to the. Straight in well, the this will go to the store. This will go, go to the, the recycling bin. This is actually a flower. Recycling. This could be. That could be compostable. Or is I'll that plastic? That. Oh, it's a plastic flower. Well, there you go. We hope you learned something. And thank you so much for joining us. And we'll see you next Friday. Take care of yourselves. And uh, yeah, catch you then. Bye. I want to do a salute. Bye. <laughs> See, I've got a thing now. <laughs>